Galaxies. I am Charlie Q and I am your personal Swexy Chef. <laughs> so today we are going to make a very happy halibut with a marvelous mushroom crust and a snappy celery -ac root and parsnip puree. That's where the twist comes in because we were just going to make the celery -ac mash so we're going to do a little experiment. So the way I want you to start we are going to take some dried mushrooms. I have chanterelle and porcini and portobello. I have some nice hot water over here. It's been cooling just for a little bit so it's not piping hot. And what we're going to do is we're going to rehydrate these mushrooms. And this is going to be part of our crust. Okay, these are covered. We're going to set them off to the side about 20 to 30 minutes just until they're hydrated. If you've never heard of celery at root, it tastes like celery and it has the cons consistency when you boil it of a mashed potato. Full of flavor and a fantastic base for the halibut that we're going to be making today. So the challenge, and this is what it looks like before we cut into it, the challenge is to really get into the celery at root. We want to cut around all of the little knobs now, if I weren't boiling this celery ac root today for our mash, then I would definitely put a little bit of acid on it. That way it doesn't oxidize so quickly. Okay, so we have got it going on here, and I'm going to just slice through. We are going to end up making little cubes so that we can smash these up just a little bit better so they don't have to be pretty. Isn't that nice? Refreshing. No stress, doesn't have to be perfect. So yeah, we are going to be adding the parsnips in. They are both white, so they'll kind of blend into each other. And to make it extra fabulous, we are gonna make a little sauce to go with it, with lemon, and adding a little bit of zing, which is always nice when you're talking about fish. You, you want a little bit of acid in there some way or another and we are going to sneak it in this way. We're also going to use some of the uh, lemon skin, the rind, put some zest. We are going to put this into the pot and I'm going to go ahead and start to cover it with some of the water so that it doesn't turn brown. It's already starting to turn just a little bit. Here's the parsnip. It kind of looks like a white carrot, right? Yeah. All right, let's peel this baby. We're just going to chop it into little pieces and let's give it half what's through here. So before we cut into this lemon, I do want to zest it, which we're also going to use as a garnish on top of our dish for a little pop of flavor because the dish is a little bit on the white side, although the mushrooms will be great. I've got my little zester. I really like this one because it's so easy to hold. So oh, here we go, we're just going to zest that whole lemon. So we're going to see how this goes as far as spacing goes. So let's go ahead and just get that all squeezed in there. Alright, all the seeds are out. Then I'm going to put a tablespoon of olive oil, EBO. There you go. And then I'm also going to grab a tablespoon of the mustard. So let's get that going. We're going to be using this later as well on the halibut to have the mushroom topping adhere to the tops of the fish. So we're almost running out of Mrs. Bridges. Let me get a refill. Okay. So we've got our mustard, half of a huge lemon, organic lemon. When it comes to organic, with the lemons it's not nearly as important um, because they have a thick rind. So I'm going to have, let's see, a one, two, three, pour for our honey. And normally a lot of people would put salt in it. Feel free to put salt. I'm going to avoid it. And that's it. So we're going to set this to the side so that when our veggies are done, we're going to put it in here and mix it all together. Welcome back, Swexies. We are about to start our mushroom topping for our halibut. 
But before we start, I forgot to put salt into the water with the parsnips and the celery act. So I added that in before it came to a boil. So we have how much longer? We have 11 minutes left before we take those to the next step. So on to the mushrooms. They have been rehydrating. Now I'm just going to strain them out. So let's do that right here. And I've got the pan, uh, the pan on. So we are just heating that up and add a little bit of olive oil. So let's go check on that, see if that is ready. Just about. Okay, so let me grab my little spoon here. All right, so we're gonna put about half a tablespoon of olive oil. Okay, and I'll put that in there. Bring this a little bit closer, a little stir. So next goes in the shallots. So I have two tablespoons of shallots. We're gonna just toss those in there. And we're just gonna let them saute for about three to five minutes. Get that going. So once they're ready, we are going to toss in our mushrooms and a fourth of a cup of sake for a little bit of flavor. We're going to cook that down until all of the sake is gone. Then we're going to take those off, give them a little chop, and put them back in the pan. So we'll be right back with that. And those mushrooms in. Nice mix. Okay, and now, the fun part. Sake, and I'm just using some regular standard sake, nothing fancy schmancy. And we are just going to cook that until all of the sake has disappeared. <laughs> Helping it out there. getting a little sake facial, opening up the pores. All of the sake is gone into my pores. And now we're just gonna remove it from the heat for just one second. And you can do it, pulse it in a food processor or you can chop it up by hand. I'm gonna chop it up by hand, it doesn't take any time. So here we go. So I'm just gonna give it a rough chop. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be pretty. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna return them uh, to the stove and we're just going to cook them for a couple more minutes until they're a little bit more dry. Put that over medium heat. We're rocking and rolling. Okay, so now we are going to proceed with our celery parsnip mash. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm not sure how we're gonna do fitting everything into the magic bullet cup because I had initially just had one celery act brew. So we'll see, we may have to do a little bit of an adjustment here. So we ended up leaving them boiling for about 13 minutes, or simmering after they were brought to boil. So they are nice and soft. It's such a surprising flavor, the celery act root. Okay, let's start out with that and see how we do. So inside the match bowl, we already have our lemon, our olive oil, a little bit of honey. It's already in there, so I have a little bit of liquid to work with. Excuse the noise. <laughs> you know, okay, sorry. It, it's making me feel a little bit like that, you know, that shake weight commercial. Maybe you can save your money and just start shaking your magic bullet. What do you say? I think that looks pretty good, actually. So we're gonna just leave it as is, set it off to the side with the, um, with the top still on just to keep it warm. And now we're gonna move on to our mushroom topping. There we go. Dry those off a little bit. Into the mushrooms, I'm going to add about, how much is it? about? A fourth of a, um, a fourth of a cup of garlic. 
I am also adding about an eighth of a cup of chives and another eighth cup of um, thyme. And we're gonna get to our panko in a second. That's what's gonna make that crust feel. So we are gonna do approximately a half cup. Okay, Swexies, we are ready for the main event. We've got the pan nice and hot. Now what we're gonna do is I have cleaned and dried off the halibut. I'm adding about two tablespoons of olive oil. Woo! And we've already got a little bit of sizzle. Actually, I'm gonna have to go for three. When you sear, you really wanna, well, it's two and a half. You really wanna get the bottom nice and cover. Let's roll that around. All right, we're just gonna sear it on each side. All right. About a minute or so on each. Flip it. take the fish off the pan. I'm going to put it on this cutting board right here. I'm going to slather it with some balsamic mustard and then I'm going to squish some of that mushroom topping on it and then put it back in the pan. Okay, because I'm going to use all of this mustard, it is okay to double dip the spoon, so do not fear. So what we're going to do is we are just going to cover the top of each of these fillets with that mustard. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna transfer this back to the pot. All right, so I'm going to put the fish back into the pan. And there's still a little bit of olive oil, which is fine, because we're gonna be adding olive oil to this dish anyway as it bakes. So there we go with that. Now, we are going to take our fabulous marvelous mushroom stuffing. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna smush it on top of the fish. Because it's just gonna add a lot of extra flavor anyway. I don't think it's possible to have too many mushrooms. We are going back to, you remember the other half of that lemon that we were working with earlier? We are going to drizzle that lemon around the outside. And we are going back to our sake. So we are going to put a fourth cup of sake, and then we are also going to put another fourth cup of olive oil. So this is the last step. We are going to put it into the oven at 250 degrees. It does not need to be high heat to cook this fish. And we're gonna leave it in for eight to 10 minutes, pull it out, and chow down. Here we go. So you remember our celery act parsnip puree. We are going to Scoop her out and put her in the center. So this also is nice because it helps give your dish a little bit of height. Stilettos for girls, mash for halibut. Now we're gonna cut into our fabulous, ooh, of course that's very hot, fish. Let me get my glove. And doesn't that look fantastic? Would you looky there? How fantastic is that? For more information and tips on food, fitness, fashion, and fun, make sure to check out my website, charliequeforce.com, and I'll see you again really soon. Stay swexy.